Here are the horoscopes for the week of the 22nd to the 28th of May 2017. The week crescendos with a new moon in Gemini on Thursday, but before we get there we've got a few bits and pieces to clear up. So the sun has moved into Gemini and the pace picks up. Mercury has passed over the retrograde phase point and is on the home straight now. So soon we'll be able to put our intentions, our dreams and visions into action, but before that there's a few bits to tidy up. So have we cleared out limiting thoughts and beliefs? With the sun in Gemini now, we can stream thought more purely. We can be more keen-minded. So with the retrograde bringing up lots for us to explore, have we looked at that? Have we looked at our thoughts, our beliefs, our values and our self-worth? And if so, we should be feeling clearer and more centered. If not, then we've got till the end of the week when Mercury actually leaves the retrograde phase completely. So we've got time to get to the heart of the matter. What did it all mean? What came up and what was the meaning and what was the value in it? And are we feeling cleaner, lighter and brighter as a result? We head into the dark moon by Wednesday and that's the final phase to do all of that clearing up. So we've got a few days now, just reflect, use that keen mind, still take it inwards, have a look at the story, have a look at the narrative, be the observer of our thoughts and have a look at what the real meaning is in the message. So by Thursday we have a new moon in Gemini and this is quite an incendiary looking one. We've got a grand trine in fire signs and we've got Mars opposite Saturn as well. So Gemini likes to speak, it likes to speak on the fly really, it likes to just process and stream thought. So I feel this will be quite a chatty, quite a lively new moon. But with that Mars-Saturn opposition, what is it that you're saying? What's the motivation behind it? What are the trigger points that are bringing up all of the speech and all of the thoughts to begin with? It does feel like things will be said quite reactionary and bring up some difficulties, maybe some agreements or some snap decisions that could be regretted later. So it's worth just going with that Saturn, going with the inner knowledge and thinking before we speak really. Uh, there could be some outside activity, there could be some flashes and flourishes in politics that can get people riled up. That's oh so easy these days with all the social media. But there's a call there to actually just look, to observe, to research and to think freely rather than be pushed have our buttons pushed into making quick responses or quick opinions. So depth and integrity there also mirrored with the Venus square Pluto, which calls us into our depth, into our maturity, so we can remember, so we can form a fully rounded viewpoint. We can stand on what we truly know rather than having our chain pulled, our strings pulled as it were. So a very lively new moon there, but like I say, as we're heading towards the end of the week, we can actually start to set some intentions. It's been quite a slow start to the year with Mercury and Venus both retrograde, but now we're coming out of that by the weekend and we can look beyond the illusions, we can lift the veil, we can feel the truth and we can speak the truth with maturity and stability from a place of core strength and self-worth. So no need to get caught up in a surface activity and distraction. It's our pure intention and it's our inner knowing that will guide us going forwards. So the retrograde completes, balance is restored. We have a new sense of harmony in our self-worth and value, which permeates into our relationship with ourself and others. Maybe we've opened up the channels to receive, to deserve to receive. Maybe love and money can flow more freely if we've caught the beliefs and blockages that had been hampering that. So there's a sense of relief and congratulations if we've taken all these tests and passed. And then with this Gemini new moon, we can set pure intentions from a clear mind and from a place of heartfelt excitement and joy, because that's been the real message of all of these retrogrades, to not just push forwards, to not just do something because it was a plan a couple of years ago, but to actually get back to the heart of the matter, to get back to our motivation, our pure intention, and to step forwards from there. So those are the horoscopes for this week, and I'll see you next week. If you'd like to explore your own birth chart and where these activities are happening for you to plot a course forward and to set some soulful intentions, I am available one-to-one -one on Skype or in London for a birth chart reading.
I also have my online group where you can explore over a longer period of time, ask questions and join in with associated topics around the subjects of astrology, numerology, tarot and many other things. I've created a zodiac pack for each sign so that's a lovely way to engage more deeply with the soul of your sign rather than just the psychology of it. There's how to find your chart, how to find your special moon dates, uh, extended power animals, use of herbs and crystals and all sorts of other bits and pieces in there. And I've created a tree oracle deck that goes with my tree walks but can be bought separately. So please do come and check out my shop if you're interested in any of those or email me zoehind7 at gmail.com.